we got to work with Mark, a really talented sound designer at Outpost in St. Louis. Mark brought these soundscapes of the film to life. But something was wrong. out of this atmosphere. Yeah. They move out of that place of their resuscitation and they come to... We mix this film in Dolby Atmos, which basically sends the sounds of the film all around the room, including up in the ceiling. It was a really immersive experience. The time I started investigating it in the 60s and said blind people and their Mark brought the sounds of heaven, hell, as well as the dramatic narrative recreations to life. We are currently in St. Louis working with our post team and our sound designer, Mark and we are about to watch the first hour of our film in a movie theater for the first time with some of the the score and sound design all mixed together. A more room on the AC, right? For the other a little bit of... <laughs> yeah, and then Monday it goes to Prince. Yeah. We also later did a sound test in Canada. This is the same Cineplex that I used to go watch movies with my brother-in-law, Marco. It's a question that all of us have pondered at least once, and it's a question that one Canadian documentary takes a closer look at. A Winnipeg filmmaker asked survivors of near-death experiences what they think they saw behind the veil. The film is called After Death. It's hitting silver screens across North America. And it's not normal that you take this kind of a film to theaters. It was proven by, you know, the people in the audience. It was playing at over 2,700 theaters, which is absolutely crazy for a documentary. Oh, no, okay. And at the end, the most important part is I feel more hopeful now than I want. And I really do. That when these people came back, the reality was different. I appreciate everyone coming out and, and watching. Thanks to you. From the entire After Death production team, I want to thank you for watching How It Was Made. <laughs>